How's it going everyone? Data here and welcome back to San Jose Sharks franchise mode episode number 10 headed into the double digits the 2025 postseason here in year number three. In the last one we came off of a solid record going 46, 27 and 9 just a couple points out of winning the Pacific Division which was good enough for third best in the entire NHL 101 points back in the postseason. Year number one a crazy run where we went to the Western Conference Final, year number two missing the postseason, and now year number three, we are back as the third best team in the NHL. 46 wins, Connor Bedard's sophomore season went point per game, 77 points, 44 goals, and 77 points through 77 games. William Eklund had a great season, the captain turned back the clock, Eric Carlson turned back the clock, we had a great rookie season from Chaz Lucius. Our biggest problem was the goaltending, as newly signed 86 overall Ilya Samsonov appeared in 55 games and had 30 wins, but had an 896 save percentage and 2.88 goals against average. Montembeau wasn't horrible in relief as he played a lot of time and um, Itu Makanyemi also did very well but only in five games, much smaller sample size, only faced 155 shots versus Samsonov's almost 1,400. So headed into the postseason, we are facing a very competitive LA Kings team. As we saw at the end of last episode, they have a stacked lineup. It'll be one of the battles of California here in round number one. Fiala, Turcotte, Kempe on the top line. Brown, Kopitar, Hoffman on the second. Kaliev, 87 overall by field and Silverberg on the th on the third line, excuse me. And Niederreiter, Taze, and Villardi as a stacked fourth line. Defense, it's 90 overall Brand Clark, 89 overall Drew Doughty, Ryan Ellis, Mikey Anderson, Sean Dursey, and Jordan Spence. Between the pipes, it's Cal Peterson who's an 84 overall. Maybe they're one weaker area overall wise, but record wise, great numbers. 908 save percentage maybe leaves a bit to be desired. Hopefully we can take advantage of that and the lack of experience I suppose he has in the postseason. Yeah, no, he was good last year. They lost in seven in round one, I guess. But yeah, also great depth, the Kupari, Krejci, Stahl, all healthy scratches. It's a very good team here in Los Angeles and it's not gonna be easy to beat them. So we gotta make sure that we are, uh, you know, all systems are go. We have Bedard, we have uh, Eklund, you know, doing what they can on that first line. But William Eklund is dealing with a little bit of an injury right now. It's not gonna be long-term. We do have playable injuries to Ferraro and Montembeau as they're coming back as well. But Eklund is at, out at the moment. That means Luke Cunnan will come into the lineup. Not going to play first line. We're still going to move things around. But he is going to come into the lineup. Speaking of the lineup, we also saw a great second half of the season where we brought in the veteran Blake Wheeler. We signed him around the halfway point. He played 39 games. He was just festering in free agency. Put up 11 goals and 22 points while only averaging... Was he really averaging 17 and a half minutes of ice time per night? Uh, no, yeah, I don't know why it says that. Those are postseason things. I don't know why. He was averaging 10 and a half minutes of ice time per night and put up 22 points in 39 games. Yeah, that's postseason. My apologies. So in a very reduced role, we brought him in for the power play and for the veteran presence. He's done well. But with injuries and with, I don't know, maybe a bit of lack of scoring depth on the team, we turn to the assistant general managers before we dive into the postseason to hear their suggestions. Starting off with Cheating Heel, who says, Great video once again. Thank you very much. What a way to end the season. Third overall in the league. Oh my goodness. As far as the playoff goes, the Kings lineup is very impressive. I think we need to spread the wealth a bit to match the depth of their lines. I'm thinking of something along this. I'm thinking of something like this. Eklund, Bedard, Lucius on the first line. And by the way, William Eklund, he's back the 21st, I believe. So that'll be like game two or three. And Ferraro and Montambo are back in uh, game two. Yeah, because there's only one or two days left on their injury. Drouet, Hurdle, Wheeler, line two. Lindblom, Couture, Mantha, line three. Zucker, Reedy, Glass, line four. I'd probably leave the defense as is and hope Samsonov gets better when it counts in the postseason. Power play lines, pony kill lines, leave some suggestions, which I will be adhering to. We're gonna make those, I'll do it off screen, but I will be doing those power play units. I'd like to keep Lindell, of course, one of the biggest things that I forgot to mention at the start of this episode. At the trade deadline, we acquired Essa Lindell from the Dallas Stars as a defensive presence. We have three offensive defensemen and he did just that 
three assists through 21 games. I wasn't looking for him to be a big point scorer. He was a plus two, all while averaging uh, just over 22 minutes of ice time per night. That's what I would want from a, from a first pair defensive guy who's eating those kinds of minutes. Four and a half star defense. Esselindale has been great, but he is on an expiring deal. We got him as, you know, a move to solidify oursel ourselves as contenders, to put the league on notice, as the title of the last video said. So, as Cheating Heel goes on to say, I'd like to keep Lindell next year, but we most likely don't have the roster spot for him. Forget the money, it's the roster spot, as Rodin, one of our top prospects on the team, will probably make the team. So will Owen Pickering. We're probably going to have to let him go as well as trade Mario Ferraro, and maybe even Merkley, as it wouldn't make sense to pay him so much money as a 7th D. So, we'll get to that heading into the offseason, but got to keep note of those things. Cheating Heel goes on to talk about how we need to target a first-line right winger for next season, and we may have some players like uh, Larry Tongue who are going to make the NHL. Absolutely. We'll keep those thoughts for when we're headed into the postseason, but I do agree with them. We're in a good position moving forward. If the goalies can step up, that is. Go Sharks. Thank you very much, my friend. Alfred says, great video as usual. Thank you, Alfred. Love the commentary when we go in-game. We should be getting some of that this episode. I think it was a solid season, but some players may be playing to remain on the roster this postseason. Goalies and forwards. Couldn't have said that better myself. Some players, I would probably say like Mantha. Most of the defensive core, aside from like Carlson and Bouchard... Um, even the goaltending, a lot of players are trying to play to keep their spot next season. I'd give the power play a series if we win, you know, or a couple of games if we don't, to see if they can perform in the playoffs. I do usually follow this type of approach, but I like Cheating Heel's suggestion, and, you know, these guys had a whole season, it didn't really mesh super well. Their leash, I don't really, there's, there is no leash, they already used it up, so I think I'm going to make some power play and penalty kill changes. Thank you for those thoughts, Alfred. DT1, NP6, DL8P said, what a great season from our Sharks. I can't wait for the playoff run. I don't have anything to say about the team this video, except that, let's get some love out here for Blake Wheeler, who had a good season. 22 points in 39 games, and no one wanted him. Kind of a redemption season, am I right? Hopefully this team goes deep into the playoffs and hopefully wins the cup. Go Sharks, go. Thank you, my friend. So, you know, we took Tic Tac's suggestion from a couple episodes ago, signed him to a two-year deal. He did very well in this first season. Great bump up his value. You know, if he wins a cup with us, deep run helps us to get it, you know, further on. That's fantastic. But no matter what, we're going to be moving on from him in the offseason. As a thank you, we'll send him to a contender. We revived his career a little bit and we're going to move on from him. We don't have the roster spot, but at the moment... It worked out to play fourth line plus power play. So with those suggestions understood, mostly for the lines and for the special teams, a lot of just excitement in the postseason, looking forward to what we can do now that we are finally here because we want to be here, not like in year number one where it was a surprise. This is the first year where I'm saying, okay, I have some high hopes and I'm looking forward to a run. Let's make some of those line changes to spread the wealth a little bit, including some alterations to the special teams. And there we go. So we'll start off game number one of the postseason with these lines. We're going to try Dwayne Bedard Lucius, playmaker with two players who simulate more as snipers. Second line, we're going to give Blake Wheeler a little promotion for the moment. Ed had commented in the Discord server that we may, may even try Blake Wheeler on the first line. I'm going to try Wheeler on the second with Hurdle and Jason Zucker, who is a playoff machine. If you don't remember, in the postseason, back in his, well, back in his first stint, his only stint with us in the postseason, 18 games. 8 goals, 18 assists, 26 points in that Cinderella run to the Western Conference Final. So 26 and 18, we'll see what he does. Let's give him the ice time to try and prove it again. Third line, Lindblom, Couture, Mantha. Fourth line, Cunning, Glass, and Reedy. Power play and penalty kill, I made the changes that I could according to Cheating Heel's comment, but Eklund is still out, so I moved things around a little bit. And I think we're in a roll like this, plus two on the first line to start things off, and we will adjust accordingly as players come back from injury and performance-wise and all that good stuff. So there's a lot going on in this postseason. Players who are likely on their last season here, maybe some of the defensemen, Jason Zucker likely in his last season. We have the young players, Bedard, we'll have Eklund in a moment. Ferraro's fully healed, but I like the defense right now. So I'm going to keep him out for the moment. Veterans like Logan Couture, Mark Edward Vlasic. It's going to be a fun ride. And it all starts here. Game one, round one at the Shark Tank. Hosting the LA Kings. The 46-27-9 Sharks against the 43-32-7 Kings. Two very strong teams who had the same record in the final 10 going 6-3-1. If this is your first time watching a postseason video on the channel, you'll see that it's well over an hour long. It may just 
just be that we lose in round number one. We have a black screen for 45 minutes. I don't want to spoil the video. I want you to be reacting live with me as I'm reacting. So if we do get out early and it's just a black screen, I would appreciate if you let that video run a little bit. But I would prefer we have an exciting video. It keeps you on the edge of your seat. And there's Thomas Hurdle opening it up 55 seconds into the postseason. I'd rather have that type of video than one that you see is 40 minutes long. You know that it's not going to be a long run. So let's get this started. First period ends 3-1. to one. Knezev, who stayed in the lineup, we did not take out take him out for Ferraro. He scores a goal early. Arthur Kaliev brings the Kings back within one, but then Luke Cunning replacing William Eklund and playing on the fourth line. He, who a veteran of this team, or at least of this franchise mode, all three years that we've been here, he's been a part of this team. Shots are 14 to 8 after 20, and we're up by two. Second period now, no scoring. Shots 25-17 in our favor. Third period, power play to open things up. Killed off. Five on five. Five minutes in. And Luke Cunning has his second of the evening. Queens in Byfield, though, makes it a two-goal game once again. Just a couple minutes after Cunning's second. 4-2 Sharks with seven minutes to go. Shots 37-21. We're getting a lot of shots on net. That's what we like to see. Cal Peterson's doing pretty well. Final minute of play, and that'll be all she wrote. Game one goes to the Sharks. Sharks. Shots end 40 to 23, almost double in our favor. Three stars in this one. Cunning with two goals and an assist. Look at him. A goal and assist from Hurdle. A goal and an assist from Byfield. Uh, well, Byfield for the Kings, obviously, but Hurdle, Cunning doing great things, and we are up 1 0 in this series thanks to the two goals and an assist. Three point night for Luke Cunning. Samuel Montambo is back. Uh, is Eklund also back? I don't believe so. He'll be back in game two three so let's keep things rolling for is gonna sit for a little bit little while longer Montambo, he's gonna sit but he'll back up in game three when Eklund comes back let's try and take both games at home here in San Jose with uh you know we're not far away from King's territory I'm sure there's a lot of King's fans out there but we have the home ice our fans are gonna be loud and they're gonna push us to victory first period at uh, shots and 12 to 8 in our favor 0-0 after 20 second period one nothing Sharks and it's Kanizhov! The goal's coming from very unlikely sources. We have Kanizhov, Kanizhov, Kunin. Where's the first line out there? But we are up one to nothing nonetheless after 40. Shots 25-18 headed into the third period. Power play Sharks killed off. And then Cody Glass scores just between power plays, I think. Power play Kings four on three. Killed off five on four for the Sharks. My goodness. And now Jakob Silverberg makes it a one goal game with under 10 to go. 2-1 Sharks. Power play for the Kings late. We kill it off huge penalty kill final two minutes in this one up by one hang on tight oh no it's jonathan taze the captain clutch not of the kings but captain clutch oh my goodness shots and 35 32 but jonathan taze with the dagger with 25 seconds to go pushes this game to overtime where were the penalties in this one it was oh a lot of them drew uh drew a high sticking double minor I'm I'm not sure why it wasn't a shorthanded goal then, but then elbowing major, that's I'm not sure what offset there, but it counted Cody Glass's goal as even strength. 35 to 32, the shots end in this one. It's a 2-2 game with two late goals from the Kings, pretty much in the second half of that third period. Overtime action, let's hit it. Overtime action here in San Jose, game two. A goal for the Sharks puts them up 2-0 headed into Los Angeles, but a goal for the Kings ties the series at one and makes it a best of five. Second line out now, it's Tomas Hurdle at the draw. Gets pushed off, another face-off win for the Kings. Fiala coming in with Carlson tracking him into the corner. Kempe, short angle shot, that's stopped by Samsonov behind the net now. Kevin Fiala to Dowdy to Turcott. Nice pad save from Samsona. And Bell's going to carry it now into King's territory. Kajupa team. Hurdle in front. Zucker oh, on the doorstep all alone. Cal Peterson makes the save. And across to Tomas Hurdle. Hurdle and Bouchard going at it. Windmill Hurdle. Oh, stop by Peterson. What a great opportunity. Tori Lindblom to Mantha. Smooth moves. That hits off uh, Ryan Ellis. Mantha. Lindblom. Glove save. Cal Peterson. Here's Bedard looking for space. Kanijov on the blue at the blue line. Gets bumped and Byfield takes it back. Kaliev now. Arthur Kaliev skating in. Gets through. Nice blocker save from Samsonov. Blake Wheeler to Zucker! That's stopped on the doorstep once again. 
Blake Wheeler to the point. It's Ryan Merkley. Merkley across to Kniazev. Here's Wheeler. Backhand stopped by Peterson. And Hurdle can't get to the puck. Where? Holding! Hurdle takes the shot anyways. Ref just watching that play. Spence holding him back. No call. Tour up to Mantha. Across to Lindblom. Lots of space! Lindblom stopped by Cal Peterson. Carlson across to get it out. Lucius. There you go. Go for the change. Here's Clark over to Kopitar. Yikes, bad moment. Kopitar stopped by Samsonov. We're holding on my breath there for a second. Bad line change. As I thought we could at least just skate in a straight line. Reedy regains possession. Get it out, buddy. Come on. No, Hoffman's just going to take it back. Hoffman, big save. Clearing out the rebound. Very well done by Reedy there. Brown will bump. Oh, again, Hoffman on the doorstep. Samsonov making some big plays here as the defense is just not helping him at all with 17.1 seconds to go in this first overtime. Tomas Hurdle at the dot. He loses that draw. Velarde, oh, tase! Oh my goodness, what a rocket as he lets that go. But Samsonov gets a piece of it with the glove. And that'll be it for this first overtime period. After 80 minutes, we are still tied at two and headed to double overtime. Through 80 minutes, shots are 46-43 for the Kings. Faceoffs 60 to 41 for the Kings as well. We have the edge and time on attack. Our passing hasn't been great, but double overtime action. Let's do it. Full energy. We got a little bit of MJ secret stuff back there from Space Jam. Let's get energy. First Kings line still out there. They're tired, but Turcotte wins it back to Clark. Fiala, Turcotte to Dowdy at the point. Back to Brand Clark. Turcotte with a little bit of space. There's an injury down there as well. I'm not sure who got injured. That, but that was Clark, but he got back up. Okay, maybe a little gingerly, but he's doing all right. Dowdy, Turcott. Great shot there and stopped by Samson against Knizhov. Brown, Kopitar broken up by Bouchard. Very nicely done. Here's Anthony Mantha now. Mantha, oh, can't change defensive pairs. It is a foolish play and loses possession. Kopitar, back into Sharks territory. Slips by everybody. One timer from Brown is blocked by Bouchard. Mikey Anderson, Connor Brown, Mike Hoffman can't get the shot away. He's bumped by Couture. Here's Spence, Kopitar, a short angle shot. Stopped by Samsonov, and he'll hang on as we're close to the halfway mark here in double overtime. Not much going on yet. Luke Cunnan coming in with the puck into King's territory. Can't get a shot away, though, as Kaliev pickpockets him. And now Silverberg, a little partial break, gives it to Byfield. Silverberg sliding across the crease of Samsonov, making the save. Silverberg. Gets bumped off the puck, it's Eric Carlson. Up to Luke Cunning now. Approaching the halfway point here in double overtime. Cunning to Glass, can't get the shot away. We barely got any shots here in both overtimes, but especially in double overtime. I don't think we have any shots yet. Eric Carlson regains possession, can calm it down a bit. Yes, he can, thank you very much. You get the first line out there. Reedy, no, you don't want to exit the territory, do you? Kaliev, Silverberg, oh my goodness. What a joke, where's the defense? I changed the forwards. Reedy can't exit the territory, and because of that, there's an overtime loss when Samsonov makes like 50 saves. How many saves did he make? He made 49 saves, 942 save percentage, and that's how we go out, because the AI doesn't know how to exit the territory. He takes the puck, does a big loop-de-loop, -loop, has all kinds of options, has all kinds of options, decides to skate to the boards, doesn't want to throw the puck out to this guy who's wide open. Let's get double teamed and hit. Carlson was skating up ready for a break for some reason. No one's there. The defense was not changing. Carlson should have been back there. And it's a three on O when I only changed forwards as the puck goes in while Reedy's still collecting himself. And was even a kick in here? Let me see this, ref. Let me see this. Yeah, nice little kick. Beautiful. We dropped game two in a disappointing double overtime loss. Shots end 52 to 44. We had barely anything going in double overtime. We don't we didn't deserve that one. And Samsonov left, hung out to dry. Really disappointing game two there. The offense just drying up. Eklund's back. All right, so hopefully with Eklund back in the lineup, that'll change things a little bit. I'm not sure about Ferraro just yet. Uh, Montembeau, we will put him in to back up um, Ilya Samsonov. Uh, actually, well, it's still a playable injury, so I won't put him back in the lineup yet, but maybe by the time the game rolls around. Hold on. Vlasic I'll send down because no one's taking him. I don't have to be afraid about waivers or anything. Let's get to the game itself. I believe by the 22nd. Yeah, now he's fully healthy and we can fix up the lines. 
All right, so let's get things back in order. The line chemistry is off because for some reason it doesn't work until you have to, you have to exit to come back in. For, yeah, forget the chemistry. First line is going to be Eklund, Bedard, and Drouet. Lucius wasn't really working on that first line, I guess. Uh, Zucker, Hurdle, Wheeler will stay together on the second. Lindblom, Couture, Lucius on the third. Cunnin, Glass, Reedy on the fourth. Cunnin, three points in two games. He's staying. Anthony Mantha, healthy scratch, buddy. 18 minutes per night, two games, nothing. That's how quick things go in the National Hockey League. I'm not impressed. And you'll get your chance to come back if anyone else falters. But for right now, let's get the lineup going like this. Hopefully that first line, Eklund, Bedard, Drouin can get a little bit of a jump start with Eklund being fully healed. It's a 1-1 series. It's a best of five as we head into Los Angeles at the Crypto.com Arena. Everyone's healthy. This is the lineup that we are deciding to have. No injuries restraining us. Let's do it. First period action, 1-0. Jonathan Drouin on that first line. Wouldn't be surprised if Eklund was involved. Love to see that. Second period, 3-2. And by the way, and Drouin's second. Those are Drouin's first goals as a Shark in the postseason because in year number one, he was injured. I don't think he played any postseason games. So Jonathan Drouin in his first few games as a uh, postseason games as a Shark gets his first couple goals. Turcotte and Brown make it 2-1 Kings. Drouin ties it at 2. Nita Ryder makes it, to, makes it a 3-2 game. So shots 23-22 in our favor, but we're down by 1. Both of our goals coming from Jonathan Drouin. I want to see some other, you know, spread the offense a little bit. That's why we made these lines what they are, to spread the wealth and to beat the Kings. But Mike Hoffman makes it 4-2. to two. 50 saves last night from Samsonov. Two nights ago, now he lets in four on 25. Down by two with eight minutes to go. The offense just not clicking right now. Not impressed with this with three minutes left. I guess that's all. Hold on. Hold on, Luke Cunning And Drowdy. Dowdy empty netter. Thank you, Luke Cunning, at least for having a little bit of passion in you. This guy's the only one who can score? Baby, come on. 5-3 loss. And we're down 2-1 in the series now. And Chaz Lucius, mild concussion. Welcome back, Anthony Mantha. I don't know. Uh, the second line, I was thinking of putting the lines back to what they were. But the second line is one of the only things that's been going all right. Like, you know, two points, three points, two points through three games. It's, it's not horrible. So Mantha will come back for Lucius. As we're going to go Lindblom, Couture, Mantha on the third line. But, um, I don't know, Couture hasn't been great. I guess that's that. Eklund, anything? One assist. All right, I like it. Power play. Should I check in on the power play here? This is pretty much what I want to be seeing. Second unit has Eklund, correct? Um, uh, let me fix that. We'll go Eklund and Mantha there. All right, on that second power play unit. Aside from that, let's wake up a little bit here. We're playing well. We're keeping it within like a one-goal game, but... Not impressed with the lack of offense. That Luke Cunning has to have three goals in three games. Bedard, Hurdle, let's go. Let's see some goal scoring. Heading into game number four. Down two to one. We cannot afford to go down three to one. Let's make it a best of three right now and have a little bit of pride out there. At Crypto.com Arena. Let's do it on the road. Losing last game by just one goal plus the empty netter. We, we scored three thanks to two from Drouet. I want to see goals from the players that I mentioned. The leadership core as well. First period, down 1 0. Power play goal for Kopitar. Second period, down 3 to 1. Drouin scores his third goal in two games. Only player who can score, the playmaker. Then we allow goals to Brown and Turcotte on the power play. Great. Shots 21 16, and we're down 3 to 1 after 40. Third period. Anybody want to get anything rolling here? Maybe anybody aside from Drouin in the last couple games who wants to score a goal? No, let's just let that clock run out. No problem. That's it. Maybe a shot every couple minutes. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Four goals and 36 shots. There you go. There's that Kings team. There's that Kings team. What? Like, aren't you embarrassed? How quickly have things just gone downhill over here? What in the world is happening? It's not the defense. The goaltending has been shaky, but... What's going on with the offense? Connor Bedard, buddy. 44 goals, point per game. One assist. Added left a comment, something about uh, maybe not enough experience. 83 poise. But I'm going to move Hurdle, uh, Bedard off the top line. Because now we're getting desperate. I'm going to move Couture to the second line. We're going to go Couture, Bedard, Wheeler on the second. Eklund, Hurdle, Drouet on the first. Lindblom, Glass... Mantha on the 
third. No, Zucker Glassmouth on the third. Lindblom Cunning, uh, Reedy Cunning on the fourth. Let's do that. Defense. Lindell, buddy, I got you for a reason. You gotta stand strong. Carlson, negative two. Negative three from Kniezhov, zero from Bouchard. Kniezhov and Merkley are both looking good. Swap Kniezhov and Kniezhov, maybe? This guy scores goals, like, randomly in the slow sims. Let's try that. And Samsonov, not impressed. You had that one really good game, but your numbers are lacking. Mario Ferraro, he had a really good season. Just, I don't know where to fit him in right now. Do I replace Kniezhov? He had 17 points and was a plus 20. Let's do... You know what? We're on the brink of elimination. We're desperate. Mario Ferraro, get in there. You're going to replace Kniezhov. Play with Merkel on that third pair, and uh, bing, bang, bong, there you go. There's the lineup for game number five. Down 3-1 in the series. We have to win three in a row, and it all starts here, back at home at the Shark Tank, in front of the home fans. We left with a 1-1 series. We're back down three games to one. Let's get some offense out there. Don't leave in in this manner. We can't allow ourselves to get kicked out of the postseason in this way. Losing four in a row and on home ice. Play with a little bit of a chip on our shoulders. Let's do it. Who are these guys that come into our territory? First period, 0-0, being outshot 13 to 5. <sighs> Second period. I'm gonna let I'm gonna let the clock run. Connor Bedard, welcome to the postseason, buddy. And we allow a goal to Ryan Ellis less than a minute later. 1-1 one, one game. Connor Bedard in the power play, though. That's our is that our first power play goal of the series? And Bedard's first. Welcome. His first career postseason goal, actually. Power play Sharks killed off. And then Eric Carlson. Thank you for joining us. 2-1 at the end of the second. Anthony Mantha. We have life from Anthony Mantha. We're finally breaking through Cal Peterson. We're up by two. 3-1 Sharks being outshot 21-15. Headed into the third period. Let's go. Let's add to this. Do not get complacent. Let's add to this. Power play Kings killed off. Very good. Power play Sharks. We have one already tonight. Killed off by the Kings. All right, we swap power plays under halfway to go here in the third. Final five minutes. We're being outshot 27-22 with three minutes to go. Up by two. Final minute. And Evan Bouchard will add an empty netter. And we have life with a 4-1 victory here at home. And Ilya Samsonov, thanks for showing up, buddy. 30 saves on 31 shots. A goal and an assist from Eric Carlson. Third star honors to the empty net goal from Evan Bouchard. Okay, all right. We have a little bit of life here. Five points in five games from Cody Glass. Love it. Back on the road for game number six now. Looking to push it to seven. I'm not going to say anything. I'm not going to do anything. I want to see the first line waking up a little bit more. That's the one thing I'll say. Defense keeps going. Ilya Samsonov, keep doing what you've been doing. Game six on the road. Round number one. Showtime. First period. 0-0. Zero, zero. Shots tied at 10 through 20. A shot per minute. Second period, gonna let the clock run now. Second period, Anthony Mantha, there you go. And of course, just nine seconds later, Jakob Silverberg ties it up. Twice now, that happens in as many games. But Anthony Mantha, two goals in two games. Power play Sharks halfway through the second, killed off by the Kings. Leading the shots, 26-19 with five minutes to go. And Jonathan Drouin, merci beaucoup mon ami. And Logan Couture avec son premier de la... De, de, de la what's the playoffs in French? Um, uh, uh, Series, series animatoire. Yeah, there we go. Sorry, I was searching in my uh, the French part of my brain. Shots 31-21 to 21 for the Sharks after 40. And we're up by two. Same as last game, up by two, headed into the third. Drouin and Couture putting us up. Thank you to the captain. And just within a few seconds of each other, as well so lovely stuff but it's not done yet third period action here we go up by two i want to see it added to just like last game five minutes in nothing yet well like last game evan bouchard had an empty netter 10 minutes to go now still up by two shots 36 24 not gonna say another word not gonna say another word about a certain player who i'm really enjoying the plate from so far and we'll hold on hold on jordan spence and we hang on oh my goodness spence Adds a goal of 51 seconds to go. Uh, Samsonov standing tall. Ends up allowing two on 27. We'll take it. Shots end 41-27 in our favor. And we just squeak out the 3-2 victory. Eric Carlson, three assists. Okay. Samsonov makes 25 saves. Doughty had an assist. And just like that, we have pushed this series to seven. 
All right, on the brink of elimination, we push it to seven. Carlson, seven points in six games. Like to see that as well. Lucius, fully healed. I'm not going to put him back in the lineup. I don't know if it was too much youth or what, but I'm going to keep the lineup as it's been, not touching anything. The offense has been waking up. I'd still like to see a Blake Wheeler goal out there, but the offense has been waking up. We've outscored the Kings 7-3 to three the last couple games. And now here we are, game seven at home. We won our last home game. We've won two out of three at the Shark Tank as well so far in this series against the Kings. It's been a really good series back and forth. We The Kings won three in a row. We won the last two in a row. And now it comes down to game number seven where we are looking to win three in a row ourselves. Game seven, round one. What a rivalry. What a series. It all comes down to this. May the best team win. I'm going to let it ride. Controller is down. Power play. Sharks early. Kill off by the Kings. Shots are 7-0. to zero. Blake Wheeler answers the call. Getting the first goal of the game. The first shot for the Kings only comes about nine minutes into the game as well. We're up 1-0. Five minutes to go here in the first period. All it takes is one shot, though. Don't underestimate the Kings. They get a few shots in the final couple minutes there. Shots end 14-5 to five for the Sharks through 20. And Blake Wheeler answers the call. Love to see that. The veteran getting in on it. He wants a shot at the cup here. Period number two now. Up by one. Things can change fast. I got to see maybe a little Jonathan Drouin magic. He's the guy in this postseason. But Arthur Kaliev ties it up. Power play. Hold on. And Jonathan Drouin. C'est la deuxième fois that he answers the call. We get the call answered. His second, excuse me, the second goal of this game for the Sharks. His fifth of the postseason, I believe. And we're up by one headed into the third period. Wheeler answers the call. Drouin answers the call. 2-1 Sharks after 40. Shots 23-15 in our favor. I'm looking at maybe first of the postseason from William Eklund. Maybe second of the series from Connor Bedard. That's what I'm looking at here in the third period. We're up by one here with final 20 minutes to go in this series. Ah! <sighs> Mike Hoffman ties it at two. Power play Kings. No, Kevin Fiala makes it three to two. Hold on, power play Sharks. Power play Sharks is killed off. Down to times four. No, up two to one. Now down three to two with two quick goals. Final five and a half minutes or so. Let's hop into this one. No, lock on to the coach. And let's get in there. It all comes down to these final, how much does the time on the clock? For five minutes and 29 seconds. Sharks are down by one at home. We need a goal to tie this game up. Oh boy, here's Logan Couture. Logan Couture skates back, puts it up to Wheeler. Wheeler off the board. Dersey getting board pinned. Kaliev, Couture comes away with it. Here's Couture, a little two on one action. Here's Bedard, he almost squeezes through, but Peterson hangs on. Offensive zone faceoff for Tomas Hurdle. Hurdle wins it back. Lindell! Oh, it hits some Kings player and goes into the crowd. Another offensive zone draw here. Hurdle wins another one back to Lindell. Now to Eklund! Glove save Cal Peterson. Dowdy over to Turcotte. Three and a half minutes to go. Alex Turcotte. Skating back, killing time, up to Kempe, Carlson gets it away. Drouin, Jonathan Dru Drouin, Samen avec les rondelles. Over and broken up by Turcotte. Turcotte poked away by Hurdle. Now Carlson, we gotta go quick here, boys. Carlson slips by, gets it to Drouin. Drouin! Stopped by Peterson in that rebound. Eklund can't corral it. Lindell, put it on net, boys. Hurdle in the corner. Eklund, Lindell, I think now's the time to pull the goalie. I don't like pulling the goalie in EA land. But let's go ahead and do it. We got to try something. We have a presence in the zone down by one. We got to just cross our fingers and go all in. Goalie pulled. Here we go. Eric Carlson at the point. Hit off the puck. Drew it. Eklund bumped up. Drew it. Eklund regains possession at the point. Carlson. Bedard's on the ice. Bedard. Drew it. Into the corner. No one's there. Drew it. Regains possession. Final minute. Lindell. Drew it. Scores! Jonathan Drew it. Avec son deuxième de la match. And it's tied at three. The empty netter works. Pulling the goalie. And Drew it. Avec son sixième de la série. Et son deuxième de la soirée. Jonathan Drouet comes in and finds it glove side on Cal Peterson. A huge goal to tie this game at three with 53 seconds to go. Leading the postseason with his sixth goal. Wow. What a moment. This is, we're not through yet. Lindell and Bedard getting the assist. Bedard coming on the extra attacker. Wheeler. Bedard scores! Connor Bedard! 4-3 Sharks! 
and that's the lead for San Jose. What a play off the faceoff after Drouet ties it up. He gets his second of the postseason, and it couldn't have come at a better moment. Oh my goodness, right off the draw, marching down to King's territory, and Bedard from down 3-2, the Sharks just five seconds later, up, lockdown defense, except, yeah, five seconds later, up 4-3, we're not done yet, but Wheeler, the veteran, feeding Bedard. What a couple seconds there, what a sequence. Up 2-1, down 3-2, up 4-3, Hoffman just wide glove side. Oh my goodness, Brent Clark, Connor Brown, big blocker save from Samsonov, he's gonna hang on here. Empty net, Kings, what a save from Samsonov, Brown on the doorstep. Get it out, boys, get it out, by field, get it out. Hoffman, by field, in the corner, he's a big boy, the players are tied out there, get it out, come on, get out, Bouchard. There we go, there we go, final, ice it, ice it, put it on net, no one's putting it on Connor Brown gets hit. Merkley, five seconds. Don't play cute. Come on. Bedard, out of the zone. Okay, offside with two seconds left. That should be enough. That should be enough with two seconds left. What a, what a few minutes from down 3-2. Pulling the goalie. Drouin ties it up. And then Connor Bedard puts us ahead. Ladies and gentlemen, from down 3-1 in the series, the San Jose Sharks are through to round number two with a game seven victory. 4-3 the final over the Kings in the series and in the game. Oh my goodness gracious, I am losing it. And I hope you are as well. If you're watching right now, don't forget to like that one. Leave a like for the crazy roller coaster and to support my throat as well. Handshake line, Kopitar and Couture, two grizzled California captains. Wow, wow, wow. All I have to say after that series. Oh my goodness. Who are the three stars in this one? Can you see? Uh, third star, Blake Wheeler. Goal and an assist. Answering the, really answering the call. Especially the game winning assist. Wow, just Kopitar furious after that one went in. Shots end 31 23, by the way. Drouin, Duzi, and Mitual. Two goals, three hits. The MVP of this series. And that game tying goal. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. And finally, the first star of this one, Connor Bedard. A goal and three assists! He had the game-tying a secondary assist and the game-winning goal, a four-point night. Four goals from Bedard. Better in that second-line role. Shout-out to Ed, who put those thoughts in the Discord server. Second line for Bedard is where he should be right now. What a night, and we're through in seven. Oh, man. I had to take a second after that one. Oh my goodness. Let's see what the point totals look like after that seven game series. Eric Carlson leading the team with eight points through seven games. Lovely, lovely, lovely stuff. Jonathan Drouin, six goals and seven points, point per game. Connor Bedard turned it up, point per game as well. Cody Glass, quietly, with five points in seven games. Cunnan, Wheeler, Hurdle, Zucker, Reedy, all with four points in seven games. Bouchard, Eklund, well, uh, Bouchard, Lindell, three and seven. Eklund, three and five. Mantha, those two goals in the last couple games there, lovely. Knizhov with a goal, Couture with a goal. That's the, probably the biggest disappointment. Logan Couture, only one goal in seven games. Chaz Lucius had nothing in three games. Ferraro, negative one in three games. Lindblom, nothing. Merkley, nothing. And Ilya Samsonov, hey, 9.15 save percentage, 2.63 goals against average. We can work with that. We can work with that. So in round number two, let's see who our opponent will be after a seven game series. We will be facing the Nashville Predators. Okay. So the Predators took down the Canucks, the Pacific Division winning Canucks in five games, EA land. Jets beat the Avs in six, Blues beat the Coyotes in seven. So Jets, Blues, Sharks, Preds. In the East, it's Carolina versus the Rangers and Toronto versus Tampa in uh, the Eastern Conference matchups. So I don't think we're gonna touch anything headed into round number two. Let's check out the Predator lineup. Here in Nashville, we see that they have Philip Forsberg, Matt Duchesne, and new Seattle Kraken in the real world, and EA NHL franchise mode, and Data72 channel legend, put some respect on his name, 
Eli Tolvanen. He has one goal and four points in five games. Solid first line. Second is Yafalo, Tomasino, and Joaquin Kemmel. Fourth, Johansson, Granlund, Balsers. Fourth, Jeannot, Pitlick, and Sizen. Solid lineup. Defense, Yossi and Tursambayev, who was the fourth overall pick in 2024. McDonough and Ekholm on the second. Samurakov and Rathbone on the third. Between the pipes, you say Saros. Yeah, 87 overall. Backed up by 84 overall. Yaroslav Askarov, one of the created players, obviously. Uh, Mason Shaw, Healthy Scratch, and Dante Fabro currently injured. So the team's even better than that when Fabro's in the lineup. It's a good lineup. Four goals, six points for Forsberg, seven points for Duchesne, all through five games. They did, you know, they have something going for them if they can take down the Pacific Division winning Canucks, second best team in the NHL in uh, five games. So game one, round two here in San Jose, coming off that big win a couple nights ago, the 4-3 victory. The fans are still feeling that one. Let's do it. Game one, round two in San Jose. First period, 2-1 Sharks. Philip Forsberg opens up the scoring in this series, but Connor Bedard, power play goal, ties it up, and then Luke Cunnan with a minute 16 to go. Love me some Luke Cunnan. Shots 13 to 6 after 20, we're up by 1. Second period, up by 1 once again. Connor Bedard, second of the night, puts us up by 2, but 5 minutes later or so after that, Yafalo gets his fourth of the postseason. 3 2 Sharks, we're up by 1, headed into the third. Shots 26 15, only one goal between us. Two from Connor Bedard. I'd love a hat trick, but let's see some other players out there. Power play Sharks killed off, power play Preds killed off. Final 12 minutes or so. Shots are almost at 30. We haven't gotten a shot in a little while now. No shots for a long time. Power play. Finally, we get a couple shots. 33-20 at the moment with five minutes to go. Still hanging on to the one goal lead. Let's add to it late, please. Empty netter. Nothing comes, but that's all right. Shots end 36-23. No scoring in the third period. And we'll take game by a number one by a score of 3-2. to two. Connor Bedard, first star with his two goals. Luke Cunnan with one. And Ilya Samsonov, a 21 save performance. All right, another tight game, only by one. But a dub is a dub, as they say. A sore knee for Essa Lindell is going to keep him out for two weeks. Really? <sighs> two weeks for Essa Lindell. Yikes, that hurts. That really hurts. Uh, I would almost... Because usually it's Kinesia, uh, Kinesia who plays top pair with um, Eric Carlson. But he's been out of the lineup. Do we bring him back on the third pair? Do we bring Vlasic in... Let's go Kniazev third, uh, first, Ferraro second, and Knizhov third with Merkley. Let's ease him back into it. And if he has, doesn't do well, we'll bring um, Mark Edward Vlasic up. So let's try that. Kniazev, you're going to play top pair with Eric Carlson, buddy. You're been, you've been doing well. We're going to give you those minutes. Game number two at home, just like in round number one. We game, won game number one at home. But let's not drop number, game number two now. Game number two, round number two, let's go up. Two games to none, headed back to Music City. First period, 1-0 Preds, Philip Forsberg scoring in back-to-back -back game. Shots 9-7 to seven in our favor, but we're down by one after 20. Second period, let's see someone not named Connor Bedard. And it's Tomas Hurdle on the power play. Thank you very much. Shots 20-13 to 13 after 40. And this game's tied at 1. It's the final 20 minutes that are going to decide it. Will it be a 2-0 series for the Sharks or a 1-1 series and a best of 5? Five minutes in, no scoring just yet. Power play, San Jose and Connor Bedard. Now we can have someone named Connor Bedard scoring. That's his, what, third of the series. Thank you very much. Power play, Nashville killed off. Power play, San Jose killed off as well. Under five to go. Power play, San Jose again late. Killed off once more. And Tomas Hurdle gets his second of the night. Even strength. 3-1 victory. Shots end 31-19. So far in this series, we have two goals from Bedard, uh, excuse me, three goals from Bedard, two goals from Hurdle, and a goal from Luke Cunning. Okay, first star honors to Hurdle, of course, with two goals. Bedard, a goal and an assist, and hey, n'oubliez pas Jonathan Drouin avec deux passes, two assists, we'll take it. And we're up 2 nothing. Thank you very much. We outscore the Predators 6-3 to three over these first two games of the series. And now we head to Bridgestone Arena in Nashville to try to make it a 3 nothing series. Taking a stranglehold on the series, if we can. And Connor Bedard really turning it up since we moved into that second line. I love it. First period, 0-0. Shots 12-7 for the Predators. They're angry. They're going to give everything they have. Second period, starts off with a goal, and it's Oscar Lindblom, everyone's favorite. 
51 seconds into the second period, his first of the postseason, shots 20 to 18 for the Sharks, and we are up by one in this into the final 20 minutes. But Tanner Janot ties it up just a minute into the period. It's a 1-1 game with 15 minutes to go now. We're leading in the shots, but Nashville's right there with us. We're pulling away a little bit now, though. 27-20, final 10 minutes, 30 to 20. They didn't get a shot for over 10 minutes. Their power play sharks late, and it's Loving Couture, the captain, who puts us up by one. Will that be enough to win it? And Luke Cunnan adds the empty netter. This series has two from Cunnan, three from Bedard, two from Hurdle, one from Couture. And we take a 3-0 stranglehold on this series with a 3-1 victory. Shots end 35-24 in our favor. The power play's been clicking. And Logan Couture, the captain, gives us the game winner. Ilya Samsonov, thank you very much. 23 saves. Oscar Lindblom, a goal and an assist. Sharos did well enough to get him first star honors, but does not get the dub, unfortunately, for him. Connor Bedard fractures his jaw. Great. For some reason, that's as long as a sore knee. He's out for two weeks. But that really changes things. There's our leading goal uh, point scorer, who's now out. And coming into the lineup will be Chaz Lucius. Boy, I'm going to take some time to actually fix the lines, because that's a big hole that we have to fill. So give me some time to fix that. All right, so there we go. We're going to move Couture to second line center. And you know what? I'm going to promote Luke Cunning from the fourth to the second line. The guy has five goals and six points in 10 games with 11 minutes of ice time per night. Get up there, buddy. And Chaz Lucius coming in on the fourth line. I did all the special team stuff that I got to do. Yeah, the, the best case scenario at this moment would be let's sweep the Predators here on May the 8th. Let's hope the Jets and the Blues go to seven, and hopefully by time round number three starts, it's close to that May like 16th, 18th, 20th range where those two injuries were. But regardless, let's just try and do our job. Game four, Bridgestone Arena here in Nashville. We don't wanna make this series go any longer than it has to. Let's just call it back-to-back 3-1 -back wins as well. We've been limiting them while also scoring enough. But I'd like to see even more from the players. You know what? Let me see a Logan Couture goal tonight. I want to see another one. But it's been a lot of the same players. I'd love to see like a random Cody Glass goal. Or even like a Evan Bouchard, Ryan Merkley goal. That's what my statements before the game begins. Let's put them out on the ice. And see what we got in the first period. No scoring shots. And 11-7 to seven for the Predators through 20. Second period now. 1-1 one, one game. There's Logan Couture. Through the first player I called. Love it. Worth like three for three on the callouts. Gramlin opens up the scoring, but then the captain, 10 minutes later, ties it back up. Shots 21 17 for the Predators through 40, but it's a 1 1 game. The final 20 minutes will decide it. Will it be a sweep for the Sharks, or do the Predators have life and bring it to game five back in San Jose? 10 minutes to go, and Oscar Lindblom! There we go! 2 1, and Luke cut it on the second line! I love it! Second of the last two games for Cunning now. 3-1 Sharks with two minutes uh, to, yeah, now two minutes to go. Up by two, power play to end it, and that'll be all she wrote. After the Predators take down the Pacific winning Canucks in five, we sweep through them in four games. Ilya Samsonov was lights out this series, 26 saves from him. Logan Couture, goal and an assist. Oscar Lindblom, one goal, and another 3-1 victory here for the Sharks. Off to the Western Conference Final for the second time in three years. So we're on quite a streak now, ladies and gentlemen. We won three in a row against the Kings. Uh, those were by three goals, then by one goal, by one goal, by one goal, and three in a row by two goals. But we've now won seven games in a row. Three against the Kings, four against the Preds. The last three all being three to one. And each game this series, we only have to score three goals. We're not always going to get that lucky. Thankfully, Ilya Samsonov played very well. The other series in the West is tied at two. Oh, no, no, it's three to one. Excuse me. I, I saw the East where they're both tied at two. But hopefully the Blues can put up a bit of a fight here so we can rest, get healthy, and all that good stuff through what now? 12 games? 11 games, excuse me. Sorry, yes. 11 and uh, 7 plus 4. So through 11 games, Jonathan Drouin and Eric Carlson are leading after as the players who played in all 11 games. But Connor Bedard still leads the team in points with 11 in 10. Luke Cunning, love to see those six goals and seven points in 11 games on that second line now. Beautiful stuff. Hurdle, Wheeler, and Reedy all with six. Bouchard, Glass, uh, Eklund all with five. Couture, three, point, three goals, four points. Mantha, four in 10. Jason Zucker, four assists in 11 games. All right. 
Lindblom, three. Lindell, three. Ferraro, a couple points in seven games. I like it. Knizhov, one goal, negative six. I'm not liking that. Knizhov, Merkley, Lucius, no points through four games. And Ilya Samsonov improving those numbers. Now a 924 save percentage and 2.14 goals against average. He's 8-2-1 in the, in the postseason. Let's rest up. Everybody eat well. Get to bed early. And let's see who our opponent will be in the Western Conference Final. And in the Western Conference Final, we will be facing the Winnipeg Jets in a rematch from 2023, year number one. In the year number one postseason, we had that Cinderella run to the Western Conference Final, went down three games to none against the Jets, came back and won two games in game six, lost in overtime, and the Jets went on to get swept out of the Stanley Cup Final by the Carolina Hurricanes. That Jets team did include Blake Wheeler. Now he's on the other side of things. And we have a rematch in 2025, Sharks and Jets. In the East, it's Hurricanes. They're here again, and they're facing the Tampa Bay Lightning in the Eastern Conference Final. If I advance another day, does anyone get healthy? Not quite yet, but we're almost there. So we'll keep the lineup as it's been. And looking at the Jets lineup now, we see Kyle Connor, Mark Shifley, and Nikolai Ehlers on that first line. Nasty stuff. Nine goals, 15 points in 11 games for Kyle Connor, 15 points for Shifley, and 15 points for Ehlers in 10 games. Second line, Brad Lambert, Cole Perfetti, Tom Wilson. Third line, Sammy Blay, Adam Lowry, Pierre-Luc Dubois. Fourth line, Achari, Studnika, and LeBanc. Former San Jose Shark, Kevin LeBanc. I always like to call him Kevin LeBanc, but I know it's unfortunately Kevin LeBanc. We traded him in that deal with the Penguins that brought us Jason Zucker. Then he ended up going to the Winnipeg Jets. So now he finds himself on the fourth line, facing us a few years down the road. Defense is Morrissey and Pionk, Dumba and Schmidt. Third pair, Hainola and Tanev. Goaltending, I'm assuming, yeah, Connor Hellebuck, backed up by Cam Talbot. Hellebuck with uh, not the craziest numbers right now, actually. He has a 907 save percentage and 2.92 goals against average. So it seems as though the defense is shaky, but the scoring has been carrying the Jets. Stanley, McGrorty, and DeMello, former Shark Dylan DeMello, as the scratches there in Winnipeg. So the top line's amazing. The second line, five goals, six points, and seven games for Lambert. Four assists for Perfetti. Okay, so the depth, yeah, Lowry's looking good. The depth isn't amazing, but and the goaltending isn't too hot either, but that top line carrying the Jets at the moment. Their path to get here was six-game victory against the Avalanche, then a five-game victory against the Blues. Now they face us as we're coming off of a sweep of the Predators. We both have a lot to prove. The Jets want that Stanley Cup after getting bounced out of the final a couple of years ago. And here we are in San Jose to start things off. Game one, round three, let's do it. The Western Conference Final. The second time we've been here in three years and just the seventh time that the Sharks have made it to the Conference Final in franchise history. Of those seven times, in the last six, Five of them have been conference final losses. Only one ended up being a Stanley Cup final appearance. Here in our seventh try in the conference final, can we make it a second Stanley Cup appearance in franchise history? Here we go. First period, 1-0 Jets. Mark Shifley opens up the scoring with just 58 seconds left in the period. Shots are tied at 9 after 20. Second period now, 1-1 game. William Eklund, his first of the postseason. There you go. Shots are 21-17 for the Jets. 1-1 game after 40. We can't go down 3-0 like we did last time we saw the Jets in the conference final. Cole Perfetti, is that his first of the postseason? Power play Jets killed off by the Sharks. We're down 2-1 now. Being outshot, we're not getting a lot of shots on net. Only 20 shots after 50 minutes. Now we're starting to come back a little bit, but Mark Shifley's second of the night might be the dagger. Down by two with five to go. The Jets are a strong team. It's that top six right there. Two from the first line, one from the second line, and that'll be all she wrote. Shots end 30-25 to 25 for the Jets, and we lose 3-1. to one. Shifley, two goals. Hellebuck, 24 saves. Nick Ehlers, two assists. Yeah, all about that first line. I would love to get uh, Essa Lindell back in the lineup. Game number two, do we have Essa Lindell back? I think we should, actually. Yes, we do. That's a huge boost for the defense. Let's get him in there. All right, so Lindell is back. Two weeks off for his sore knee. Feeling good, baby? I hope so. Scratch. I'm going to put Knizov back in the healthy in the scratches. Uh, Bedard, playable injury, but I'm going to keep him out until he's really ready. Feels a bit weird to be scratching an 83 overall top 4D, but negative 6, he's the worst plus minus, and the lineup was doing well with our defense as it was with Lindell there in the top pair. 
Kniazev where he was. So let's keep it rolling. Lindell's back in the lineup. We don't have Connor Bedard just yet. He should be back for game three or four. Four. I don't want to risk him being out for the entire postseason. That's why I'm hesitant. But game two at home. We can't drop both at home. We want to tie the series up ASAP. Lindell's going to shore up the defense. Now let's let the offense do their job. First period, 1-0 San Jose, and it's Cody Glass. Shots tied at 11, and we're up by one. And very nice after 20. Second period action now. No scoring. But the Jets pulling away in the shots, 24-18. to but we're still up by one, thanks to the first period goal from Cody Glass. Third period, and Jason Zucker, his first of the postseason, comes at a great moment. Thank you very much. 2 nothing Sharks. 12 minutes to go in this one. Power play San Jose, killed off by the Jets. They still have life in this one. They're pushing hard with the last five minutes to go. Shots tied at 28. Nate Schmidt makes it a one-goal game. And Shifley ties it up 40 seconds later. But Blake Wheeler, against his former team, gives us back the lead. And Luke Cunning adds the empty netter as the Sharks win 4-2. What a roller coaster of a third period. As the shots end tied at 32, but we win this one 4-2. Blake Wheeler, the game winner, 30 seconds after Mark Scheifele tied that game up. Oh my goodness. Woo! Three stars in this one. Cody Glass, a goal and two assists. I love Cody Glass. What a great redemption story for him. I love that free agent signing. A great storyline for this Sharks series. Really love when those storylines come through. Wheeler, a goal and an assist, and a 30 save performance from Ilya Samsonov, who has really woken up here in the postseason. If even if he implodes, I'm not gonna jinx, I'm just saying, even if he were to implode at this moment, I am proud of how well he has done. I'm just gonna say that. This series is now tied at one. Blake Wheeler, um, Connor Bedard, not fully healthy just yet, so I'm gonna keep him out of the lineup. But we're headed to the Canada Life Center with it being a best of five now in the Western Conference Final. Same in the East, where it's also a 1 1 series between the Hurricanes and the Jets. Whoo, coming off of a roller coaster 4 2 victory. We're here in Winnipeg. The whiteout is going on. It is probably snowing in May. Let's do it. First period, 2 1 Sharks. Nick Ehlers opens it up, but Blake Wheeler. Whoo, the home fans didn't like that one, but they let him go. Ties it up, and then Logan Couture, the captain, gives us the lead. Shots are 13 10 for the Jets. But we're up by one here in the second period. Power play Winnipeg early. Power play Sharks. All right, we'll send through the second period. No, Anthony, oh, I was about to say no scoring. Anthony Mantha on the power play. And then Evan Bouchard with his first even strength goal, not on an empty netter. Woo, shots are 22-19 after 40, and we're up by three. That's a nice cushion. Not over yet with that first line by any means, but we have a nice three-goal lead, and I'd love to see some more addition to it. Pierre-Luc Dubois makes it a two-goal game. We still have that two-goal lead, but it's a dangerous one. Under 10 to go. Out shooting Winnipeg, 28-25. Power play Jets. We kill it off with under five minutes to go, but Tom Wilson makes it a one-goal game. Final 30 seconds. Seconds we hang on. That's why you need big cushions. Two third period goals from the Jets, but we had enough to afford it. Shots end 30 to 27, and we win this one four to three. Mantha goal and assist. Wheeler goal and assist. Couture goal and assist. Lovely stuff. Whew. Is Connor Bedard now back headed into game number four? Four. Yes, he is. Welcome back. That's a huge boost for us. Let's get these lines back to what they were. But Anthony Mantha, does he come out of the lineup? Oh, no, it's going to be Chaz Lucius. Okay, no problem. We know what we're going to do. All right, the lines are set. Connor Bedard back at second line center. But I'm going to keep Luke Cunning up in the second line. Seven goals in 14 games. He's doing something right. Logan Couture will play wing on the third line with Glass and Mantha. Zucker down to the fourth line. And Chaz Lucius back out of the lineup. So there we go. We're up 2-1 in the series on the Jets. And we just got our leading point scorer back. Still leading the team with 11 points in 10 games. The Lightning are up two games to one on the Hurricanes. We're up two games to one on the Jets. Both series far from over. Game four at the Canada Life Center with the possibility to go up three games to one and be on the brink of heading to the Stanley Cup Final back at home. But let's not count those chickens before they hatch too soon. Game four coming off of a great performance. Lindell is here. Bedard is here. We're fully healthy. Let's show the Jets what we've got. 
First period ends 2-1. to one. Ehlers scored early on the power play. Blake Wheeler answers once again. Then Pionk on the power play. Has two power play goals in like three and a half minutes that we allow. Shots are 12-10 to 10 after 20. And we're down to 2-1 to one thanks to those two power play goals that we allowed. Second period ends 2-2 thanks to Connor Bedard. Welcome back, my friend. 12 points in 11 games. And headed into the third. Shots are 26-18 in our favor. Game tied at Two. Final 20 minutes to decide everything. Will this series be tied at two and be a best of three? Blake Wheeler's second of the night puts us up three to two. And we are that close now to a 3-1 series lead. The Jets still with about seven minutes to say something about it. Five minutes to go. Shots 35-28 in the final two minutes now. Jets pushing hard, but Eklund adds the extra insurance. And the Sharks win it four to two. Eklund second of the postseason. 4-2 victory from down 2-1 to winning 4-2. Connor Bedard in his first game back gets a goal and two assists. Blake Wheeler against his old team, the veteran. What a signing. Two goals and an assist. And Ilya Samsonov, 29 saves. Take a bow. The Sharks are now up 3-1 on the series. And we have the possibility to end it back at home in game number five. 14 points in 11 games for Connor Bedard. Hurricanes and Lightning tied at two games apiece. Ladies and gentlemen, I have nothing to add. Game five at home with a chance to go to the Stanley Cup final for the, just the second time in franchise history. I don't need to say how much this game means to us. Let's do it. First period, 0-0. Zero, zero. Shot 16-7. to seven. Wow, the Jets pushing hard. In those first 20 minutes. Second period. 3-0 Jets. Ehlers, Stunika, and then Stunika again with 5 seconds to go. Ooh, that's a backbreaker. Shots 27-18. to 18. The Jets really not wanting to go out. Down 3-0 here in the third period. We're going to need something soon if we want to get back in this game. But it's not looking good as we still have nothing around the halfway point. Power play Winnipeg. And there you go. Let's call it. Let's call it. 4-1. Drouin adds a goal to break the shutout. But shots end 34-31 for the Jets. And we drop this one 4-1. Two goals from Studnika. 30 saves from Connor Hellebuck. And a goal and assist from Nikolai Ehlers. We have a 3-2 series on our hands headed to game number 6 in Winnipeg. Held to one goal just like we were back in game number 1. So the Jets know if they want to hold us back, it can't be through outscoring us really. Like they can get 3 or 4, but we can also get 3, 4, 5 on, you know, on a normal night. They got to keep us at bay. They got to only allow one or two if they're going to get a victory. The Hurricanes are up 3-2 in their series. We're up 3-2 in ours at the Canada Life Center on the road. Boys, let's end it. Don't let it go to seven. They beat us in six. Let's beat them in six. Make it poetic and just put the point final and call it. First period, 3-1 Jets. Nikolai Ehlers opens it up. He's been on fire. Connor Bedard ties it. And then Tom Wilson. Oh my goodness. In the final minute and six seconds, Tom Wilson scores. And four seconds later, how does that even happen? Mark Shifley scores. Down by... Th 2-3-1, 14-10 the shots for the Jets after 20. Yeah. Let's just let it ride. Controller down, power play Jets. Oh my goodness, Brad Lambert. We're down by 3. <sighs> okay, William Eklund gets us back in it. We're down by 2 with still halfway to go in this game. Power play Sharks. This would be big. 5 on 3. Killed off by the Jets. 5 minutes to go in the second period. We're still down by 2. One more would be huge for momentum. And actually, let's just break the momentum that we had it going at all. And we are once again down by three. Down five to two. Five goals on 25 shots against Samsonov. Thank you very much. What a joke. Nine to three. Nine goals on 37 shots. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Let's see the save percentage in that one. 757 save percentage. Are you proud of yourself? Are you proud of yourself? I hope you are. Negative threes from Lindell, Carlson, Glass, and Couture. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. And just like that, up three games to one with a 9-3 loss. Being outscored 13-4. The last two games. We are now headed to Game 7 in San Jose. Same from the Eastern Conference. Game 7 between the Hurricanes and the Lightning. 
Oh my goodness. What can I even say? What can I even say? Luke Cunnan hasn't scored in a little bit, but he still has 10 points. At plus 11. That's It's too good. The top six is too good to touch. Hurdle, the only three goals. Should we swap like... I don't know. For the first line center. Can Connor Bedard go back to first line center now? Let's do it. Let's go Eklund, Bedard, Drouin. Cunnan, Hurdle, Wheeler. And then, yeah, keep the rest of the lineup. Lindell, plus two. Everyone's still a plus out here? Everyone's still a plus, despite that terrible game. And I'm not going to take out Samsonov, but that was a brutal one. I'm going to give Bedard some more ice time, and that's about it. Drouin hasn't done anything too much in a while. He had like six goals in, what, seven games? Now one goal in the last ten games? This has a third-line scorer. I'd almost put Wheeler up with Bedard. It does give it a plus one. <sighs> Tough call. Let's do it. Maybe a chip on his shoulder. Let's do it. Eklund, Bedard, Wheeler. Tough decisions, but let's do it. Game seven in San Jose. Boys, nothing I can say but this. We have the youth. We have the experience. We have the performances. We've had the production. We've had the defense. We've done it before. We've done it all postseason long. We know we can do this. The veterans, Couture, Carlson, even guys like Hurdle, Zucker, Wheeler, lead this team. Eklund, Bedard. Look at these icons. Look at these giants. Perform for them. Perform for the brother on your left, the brother on your right. Stand tall. At home in front of the fans. Game 7 of the Western Conference Final. 2025. Controller down. Let's do it. Let's do it, boys. Power play early for the Sharks. And it's a power play goal from the captain. Logan Couture, we're still in the power play as well. A whole, like, we're still going. That was like a 11-minute power play. Logan Couture gets the lone goal, though. He had a lot of shots on net. And Blake Wheeler, the veterans, put us up 2 to nothing through 20 minutes. There we go. Shot 17 to 7. We're coming out with everything we've got. 2 nothing Sharks after 20. Logan Couture and Blake Wheeler, the two veterans. Blake Wheeler on the first line as well, getting the two goals. Kevin LeBanc against his old team makes it a 2-1 game. Power play Sharks killed off by the Jets. Halfway through this game, we are holding on to a one-goal lead, more than doubling the shots. 27-10 to 10 at the moment with five minutes to go. Final three minutes in this period, and we'll head into the third, almost tripling the shots. 31-14. to 14. We were tripling at, at one time, I think. Up by one. The veterans scoring in the first period, quiet in the second. A lot of shots, though. More than doubling. I, yeah, why am I saying close to tripling? 14 times 2 is 28. So we're more than doubling. 31-14 at the moment. One goal between us and the Jets. We need some insurance. We need to, to add to the divide between us right now. Connor Bedard, those first line minutes. Jonathan Drouin, one goal in your last 10 games. I'm looking at you, boys. Cody Glass, maybe a surprise from you. Defense, you want to pitch in? Stand tall, gentlemen. Third period, up by one. It all comes down to these 20 minutes, and it's Kniazev! The defense answers the call, and we're up by two. Power play, Sharks, killed off by the Jets. Two-goal lead, Kniazev, second of the postseason, but Nikolai Ehlers makes it a 3-2 game. Up by two, more than doubling the shots. 40-20, Tomas Hurdle restores the two-goal lead. 4-2, Sharks, final 38 seconds. Let's hop in for this one with a two-goal lead. Tomas Hurdle potentially giving us the insurance marker. 41 seconds to go, and we're up by two. Billy Hanola wins that faceoff. Uh, wins the faceoff, gets off the faceoff. Here's Tom Wilson streaking in. Oh my goodness, what in the world was that? Thankfully, Samsonov makes the save and hangs on with 32 seconds to go. That was a scary one. The Jets have their goalie pulled. Empty net, defensive zone faceoff. Bedard wins it back to Lindell. Wheeler exits the zone, very good. Everyone comes back in, okay. Very scary, gets it across to William Eklund now. 20 seconds to go. Can we ice it? No, gives it to Pionk. Kyle Connor over to Kevin LeBanc. Here's LeBanc keeping it down the wing. In front! Oh my goodness, a weird play, but thankfully it stays out. Behind the net, 10 seconds to go. Connor Bedard gets it up. Hold on, Connor. Pionk 
Final second, Samsonov makes the save. And for the second time in franchise history, the San Jose Sharks are off to the Stanley Cup Final. What a journey it's been. Round one, down three games to one. We come back and win in game seven, down by two goals, down by one, tying it up and then winning it. Round two, sweep. Round three, up three games to one. Crazy couple losses, 9-3 loss. We come back in game seven. That was Lowry and Couture, the captains, I think. Samsonov and Hellebuck shaking hands. And now Logan Couture goes to see Bill Daly. The Clarence S. Campbell goal does not touch it, but shakes his hand with a big smile on his face. Wow. Your San Jose Sharks threw to the 2025 Stanley Cup final. Shots in that one ended 42 to 25 in our favor. I think we definitely deserved it. And now for the second time in the franchise's 33 year history, we are through the Stanley Cup final. What a feeling. Through 14 games, Connor Medard has scored 17 points. Blake Wheeler though, in all 18 games, he has played six goals, 10 assists and 16 points. I can't get over this mid-season pickup of Blake Wheeler. Drouet, 7 goals, 7 assists. Love that. Cunning, 7 goals, 12 points. We were thinking about trading him at one point. Glad we kept him. Hurdle, 11. Eklund, 10 and 16. Carlson, 10. Glass, 9. Manta, 8 and 17. Logan Couture, 5 goals, 2 game winners. 7 points and 18 games from the captain. Bouchard has 7. Reedy, 6 assists. Zucker, 5. Lindell, 4 and 14. Ferraro, 4 and 14 as well, and a plus 5. Love me some Mario Ferraro. Lindblom, 3 points. Merkley, 3 points. Kanias have 2 goals, 1 game winner as we know. Knizhov one goal in eight games and Lucius nothing in those seven games. Ilya Samsonov through 18 games, 12, 5, and 1 is his record. 908 save percentage, 2.74 goals against. That one game of 757 really uh, hit him hard. He's allowed 49 goals on a 534 shots in the postseason so far. He's been doing his part, and now we're off to the Stanley Cup Final, where we will be facing the Carolina Hurricanes. Wow, the winner of the 2023 Stanley Cup, now here in the 2025 Stanley Cup Final to face the San Jose Sharks. So the Hurricanes won the 2023 Cup, lost in round number two last season in 2024, and now in 2025 are back in the Stanley Cup Final as the champions of the Eastern Conference. Let's check out this lineup in Carolina. We see the first line is Teravainen, Aho, and Shvashnikov. 14 points, uh, 12 points, and 10 points respectively. Second line, Kokanyemi, Pavelski, and Jarvis. 40-year-old Joe Pavelski against the team that drafted him in the seventh round 22 years ago. Wow, he has 11, uh, excuse me, 13 points in 17 games. Kokanyemi, Pavelski, Jarvis, third line, second line. Kalorn, 88 overall, Martin Nechas, who has, who has a point per game with like 14 and a half minutes of ice time per night. And Colin White on the third. Fourth line, Gunler, Ryan Suzuki, Dominic Bach. Defense, we see Slavin Larson, Edler Brody, former Shark Alex Edler for a little bit, and Hayden Fleury with Ethan Bear. Between the pipes, it is Capo Kakin, and I totally forgot. Backed up by Matt Murray. Of course, the goalie we traded away because he wasn't cutting it. He's going to win the Vezina this season, and then he's going to lead the team to the cup. 12, 5, and 0, a shutout, 920 save percentage, and 2.35 goals against average with the Hurricanes so far. So coming back to haunt us, Capo Kakinen. Wow. What a storyline here in the Stanley Cup final here in 2025. The only other time that the Sharks were here was nine years ago when they fell in six games to the Pittsburgh Penguins in the 2016 Stanley Cup final. But here we are in 2025. A lot of veterans are back for more. Game one of the 2025 Stanley Cup final. What a ride it's been already. And there is more to come. Game one, round four, Sharks. Hurricanes, let's do it. First period, 0-0, zero, zero. shots 9-4 to four for the Hurricanes after 20. Who's going to score our first goal of the Stanley Cup Final? Let's go. Second period, 2-0 Hurricanes, two power play goals. 
Jarvis and Teravainen. Shots 22-16 for the Hurricanes, and we're down two to nothing. And Aho, 29 seconds in, makes us makes it a three-goal game. Power play Hurricanes killed off. Hold on, power play Sharks. Here we go. Blake Wheeler, power play goal. Still power play. Oh, power play Hurricanes. Killed off. All right, we're down by two. Okay, Tomas Hurdle. 3-2 game. Power play Hurricanes again. Stay out of the box, boys. And Aho makes it 4-2. We almost had a good comeback on our hands. Blake Wheeler and Tomas Hurdle. Tomas Hurdle again. Hold on, let me hop in. Let me hop in here. Hold on. Hurdle gets his second of the period. And that makes it a 3 or a 4-3 game. Let's see what we have with uh, whatever 47 seconds to go. With... 56 seconds actually to go left in this one. Tomas Hurdle makes it a one goal game. Hold on, here's Hurdle again. Hurdle, if you can set something up, I'll pull the goalie. But that wasn't really anything. Slavin over to Aho, 45 seconds to go now. Taravainen stops up, looking for something. Poke check evaded. Luke Cunning now, skates back. Let's go, skate forward, buddy. Over to Carlson, up to Drouet, over to Lindell. Now here's Hurdle, 30 seconds to go. Hurdle deeks nobody, can't get even really past the blue line. Lindell, Drouet, come on, let's get out of here, boys. Carlson get the first line in there. Carlson, Wheeler, across to Lindell, 10 seconds to go. As to Lindell, pull goalie, except in front, Bedard! Oh, a piece of it, the Kakinen gets a piece of that one. Goalie pulled, but not enough time to really get much going. Aho, Bouchard takes it away, and that'll be it. We tried our best, and we dropped game number one at home in the Stanley Cup Final. Four to three. Shots 37-27 for the Hurricanes. They deserved it. We played well, but they just played better. Down one game to none. Tough, you know, one goal game. It was the, those power play goals at the start of the game that killed us. So if we can stay out of the box, especially we gave up a lot of penalties, uh, power plays, and uh, because of our penalties in the third period, if we can stay out of the box here in game number two, I think we have a much better chance. Let's make it a best of five and tie the series up with a win in front of the fans at home. Game two of the Stanley Cup final. First period, again, two nothing Hurricanes after 20. This time, two even strength goals. Larson and Sveshnikov. Shots 13 to 9 after 20. Second period, 4 2. Luke Cunnan and Blake Wheeler and Luke Cunnan tie the game up at 2. And then Teravinen, 7 seconds later, and again with 57 seconds to go, restores the 2 goal lead for the Hurricanes. Come on, boys. Shots are 29 17 for the Hurricanes. We're down by 2. Wheeler and Cunnan, thank you very much, gentlemen, but let's go. Let's go Connor Bedard, let's go William Eklund, let's go Eric Carlson, controller down, down by two, third period, <laughs> Patrick Teravine, and thank you Blake Wheeler, still a two goal, okay, and Connor Bedard, we're down by one with lots of hockey left to be played, 12 minutes to go, down by one, halfway point, shots are 33-23 for the Hurricanes, down by one, five minutes to go, Oh my goodness. Seven goals? We're, oh, we're within one, within one. Then we allow two. Within one, within one, allow two. Come on. We got four goals on 23 shots, but we can't even win because we let in seven on 37. Seven on 37. What's up with the plus minuses here? Negative four from Kniezev. Three from Cunnan, three from Hurdle, three from Drouet, three from Bouchard. Yeah, we're making some changes. And an 8-11 save percentage from Samsonov. Down two games to none as we drop both games at home in the Stanley Cup Final. We got to make some changes. And we got outscored 11-7 to in those first two games. I think in game number three, we're turning to the veteran, Mark Edward Vlasic. I'm going to put Ferraro up to the second pair with Bouchard. He was on third pair with Merkley. Vlasic will play third pair with Merkley now. Ferraro to the second pair. Let's try that. He hasn't played at all here in the postseason yet. We're in the Stanley Cup final. I think he deserves at least some ice time in the Stanley Cup final for all of his years of service. So Mark Edward Vlasic, welcome back to the lineup. Forwards I won't touch, but we're getting to that point down two games to none. This is a must-win game in Carolina. On the road, it's not going to be easy, but let's do it at the PNC Arena in Carolina. Down two games to none in the Stanley Cup Final. This is where we have to show up. First period, 2-2 game. All right. Colin White opens it up shorthanded. 
Shvashnikov makes it 2 0. For the third straight game, we're down 2 0 to start the game. But Tomas Hurdle on the power play. And Blake Wheeler, the guy has 10 goals and 10 assists for 20 points in 21 games. I can't say enough about this guy. Ties it at 2. Shot 16 to 10 in our favor. 2 2 game after 20. Yeah. Second period now. 4 2. Thank you very much. Luke Cunning on the power play. Keep it coming. Nizam. Nizam. What that mean? And Connor Bedard extends the lead to two. Shots are 28-18. We're up by two, headed into the third period. Let's make it up by three. I would love to see an up by three. Any second now. Not coming yet. Halfway through the period, power play. Hurricane sends a power play goal from Sveshnikov, his second of the night. Shots are 36-23, but it's only a one-goal game. Five minutes to go. Give me some insurance here, boys. Let's go. We're at 40 shots. Final minute, and we hang on. Oh, my goodness. Shots end 39-26, to 26, but we squeak out the 4-3 victory. Sveshnikov had two goals. Aho had three assists, but Bedard a goal and an assist. It was enough for us to get the win. We're down 2-1 in the series. We have life, and we're looking to tie it up in game four. We lost both games at home. Let's try and win both games on the road. Nothing to say. Nothing to change. Vlasic, you seem to be the lucky charm. Let's hope that it keeps uh, that uh, the magic hasn't run out. Whew. Another must-win game. We don't want to go down 3-1. to one. Let's, let's try to open up the scoring this time, boys. Let's go up early. First period, 0-0 zero, zero, at least. We'll take that. Shots 13-9 to nine for the Hurricanes through 20. Second period action, 1-1 one, one game. Oscar Lindblom, shorthanded, love to see it. And Colin White, second goal in as many games. Shots are 23-21 for the Hurricanes after 40, but it's a 1-1 one, one game. Anyone's game in the final 20 minutes. And if we win this next 20 minutes, we're tied at two. It's a best of three. If the Hurricanes win this next 20 minutes, we got to win three games in a row. Power play Hurricanes to open it up. Not what I want to see, but we kill it off. Power play, five on three for the Sharks. Killed off. Come on, we got to capitalize. Power play Hurricanes. We kill it off. All right, even strength now with five minutes to go. And Dominic Bach makes it two to one. Shots are tied at 33. Final minute and a half. Let's hop in. This game is looking at the ratings. Hurricanes, offense, defense, and goalies all higher than our ratings. 96, 89, and 86. Ours are 93, 88, and 84. So we're holding our own. But, you know, here on the road, the Hurricanes have a chance to go up three games to one. A minute 41 left. Let's try and push. Let's go. Big face-off win. Ryan Merkley. Let's go. Let's establish a presence. And then let's pull that goalie. If we could get possession, though. Kakinyemi over to Slavin. Minute left. Here's Seth Jarvis. Jarvis over the blue line. Uh, a lot of space for him. Yeah, okay, just walk in. There you go, Mantha. Okay, Kakinyemi, come on. All right, and Samson will hang on. Thankfully, that will allow me to change the lines, but that was disgusting. Lake Wheeler leading the postseason in goal. Bedard and Cunnan right behind with nine each. Here we go. Defensive zone draw. Aho versus Bedard. Let's go big win, buddy. Let's do it. Oh, wins it back. Larson, one-timer. Samsonov slides across the crease. Here's Eklund now. 40 seconds to go. Connor Bedard. William Eklund. Oh, hold on. About to pull the goalie, but Slavin gets possession. I keep forgetting. I, I can hold down the uh, touchpad to, uh, to uh, pull the goalie. I keep forgetting that. Someone, I think it was Dexter who left a comment a while ago telling me that. Larson. Here we go. Come on. Let's just get possession in the zone, boys. But no, let's not even fight for the puck. Let's just do a little push and then let him skate away. 20 seconds to go. Coming in, uh, Aho, easy walk in. Coming into this game was a joke, I suppose. Nothing's happened. Let's see if Hurdle can win us a face-off here. Let's go, Tomas Hurdle. He wins it back. Evan Bouchard to Luke Cunning. Let's pull that goalie. Here we go, yeah, accept, accept. There we go, pull him, here we go. Larson, Slavin. At this point, with five seconds to go, just let them score the other if they have to. Try and do anything. That was a joke of a, of a hop-in. Nothing happened. Absolutely nothing was generated. Shots end 37 to 34, and we dropped that. For the Hurricanes, we dropped 2 to 1. We gotta score these goals. It's not even that the Hurricanes. I don't even want to lose to the Hurricanes. I don't want to lose to Kakinen. I hate when goalies. It's so common. The goalies are horrible for you. Then the first year they leave, they're amazing wherever they go. Let's try and shake things up. Uh. Let's get Cunnan on the top line, maybe. I don't know. Cunnan's been amazing. Eklund, Hurdle, Drouin. 
Who's uh, doing well in this? 5-3-2-7-4-4 four, four versus 7-9-7-9-3. Seven, nine, seven, nine, Let's leave... Uh, we'll leave it as is. Just that little swap in the top six. And, the th yeah, the fourth line can stay the same. Defense... Plus one, negative two, plus five, plus one, zero, and zero. Not much to say for the defense, really. Uh, swap Lindell and Ferraro? Why not? Just to say something. And Samsonov, allowing three goals against on average per game. Let's just do that. On the brink of elimination, we're doing, we're throwing everything at them. Cunnan, Bedard, and Wheeler are top three players on that top line. Let's do it. We got to win three in a row. We did it in round number one. We can do it again, starting with game number five at home in San Jose. The home fans are hungry. They saw two losses in games one and two of the Stanley Cup final. They want to see a Stanley Cup final victory. Let's do it for the fans. First period, 1-1. One, one. Jason Zucker opens up the scoring. Love it. And then Seth Jarvis ties it up about five minutes after that. Shots 11-9 to nine for the Hurricanes. We're tied at one after 20. Controller down. Let's see the second and third period here. And try to generate some offense. Let's go. Let's go, Jonathan Drouet. Ça fait longtemps depuis la dernière fois que je vu un but par lui. 2-1 Sharks. But then Noel Gundler ties it right back up. 2-2 game, five minutes to go here in the second period. Drouin with, what, his eighth or ninth? And then, of course, Martin Natchez gives them the lead. And we're down by one in the third. Shots 22-21 for the Hurricanes. Down by one, 20 minutes away from winning the Stanley Cup. The Hurricanes are going to be defending. We need to throw everything we have, boys. Everything we have in this third period. Let's go. Leave it all out on the ice. I say leave it out on the ice, you immediately take a penalty, and Nate Chas gets a power play goal. Anthony Mantha hooking. Yeah, you're done. You're done. And then Jarvis even strength. Five goals on 30 shots, 29 shots. Yeah. Samsonov. There you go. There you go, boys. There you go. Thank you, Logan Couture, for some life. Thank you. Thank you for that life. A passionless Stanley Cup final from this team. Guess the, the tank ran dry. The tank ran dry. As the Hurricanes win their second Stanley Cup in three years. And the Sharks fall in five games in the Stanley Cup final. Brutal stuff. Really hard stuff. The Hurricanes swept through the Capitals, took down the Rangers in six, Lightning in seven, but then cruised through the Sharks in a five-game series. They beat the Jets in four. They swept the Stanley Cup final in 2023, so at least we gave them a one game. But untimely penalties not helping us. I mean, Tomas Hurdle had 24 penalty minutes? What? Come on. Blake Wheeler, 21 points in 23 games. What a postseason. What stories. I would have loved to win the Stanley Cup with this team. 21 and 19 from Bedard. 18 from Carlson. 17 assists. Drouet, 17 points. Hurdle, 17 points. Negative 8 and negative 9. Luke Cunning, 9 goals, 16 points, 23 games. He was the hero of this postseason. Uh, like the more the, the unlikely hero, I would say. William Eklund didn't do what I would have wanted. 13 and 21. Logan Couture, not good enough. Nine points in 23 games. Mantha, definitely not good enough. Cody Glass did well. Nine points. Bouchard, seven. Reedy, seven assists. Jason Zucker, bah. Limited ice time, but not great. Essa Lindell, six assists and a negative one. 22 minutes of ice time a night. <sighs> Lindell, five. Ferraro, I know he's 85 overall, but he's a special teams guy. Ferraro, four assists and a plus six. Merkley, three assists. Kniaz have two goals. Knizhov, negative six with a goal. Vlasic was even, plus minus, through three games, playing over 14 minutes a night. We gave him what we could. We tried to get him the cup. We tried to get him the cup. And Chaz Lucius, no points in seven games. I sent him down. <sighs> Samsonov ends with a 900 save percentage and 3.11 goals against. I know I said I was proud of him no matter what, but really... 
sad in the last couple of rounds. Allowing over three goals per game and a 900 save percentage. Meanwhile, of course, a Stanley Cup ring for Capo Kakinen and a 915 save percentage, 2.58 goals against average. Of course, after he leaves us here in San Jose, he had an 898 save percentage and he goes on and wins the Stanley Cup in his first year. Of course. We did well in many regards, but disappointing finish. It's a long enough episode. Let's just get to the draft, recap whatever we got to recap, and get our offseason thoughts ready headed into the 2025 offseason. Carolina Hurricanes win the Stanley Cup. Ontario Reign, the, the uh, Kings Calder um, AHL team, win the Calder Cup. Simming towards the draft now. Montreal going from 5 to 1, and they have the second pick. Wow! Montreal picking at one and two. Calgary from Florida drop one to three. And then their fifth pick, which went to Montreal, goes five to one. Wow, brutal. Montreal picking one and two. Maybe they'll want to trade a pick. I don't know. Retired players now in 2025. Do we have anyone calling it a career for us? Eric Stahl calls it a career. Wow, at the age of 40. Parise. Brent Burns, former San Jose Shark, of course. Latang, Giordano, Lucic. Any other players for us? Alex Edler, former Shark. Uh, no, no one else called. Oh, no, Danny DeKaiser, Danny DeBello, Danny DK, Donkey Kong DeKaiser. What a legend. Thank you for your service here in, in San Jose. Uh, no one else retiring. So Mark Edward Vlasic, back for more. Goaltenders retiring here in the 2025 class. Not a big class of retiring players. Yaroslav Halak at the age of 40. Grice, Del Poulain, Ortio, Irving. There are your retirements here in 2025. Uh, Going to be some draft interviews now, which I'll do off screen. Burns and Prize now coaches, by the way. Halak, Holden, and Grant are all now scouts. Uh, coach retirements. I didn't even bother to look at those. My apologies. Let me do a few draft interviews off screen just to uncover some more information where necessary. All right, so the interviews are done, just uncovering a little bit more information on some prospects. And now here we are at the draft. So headed into the off season, what can we really look at? I don't think there's much to say. And I know our coaches are running out of contracts. So I think all of them actually. Do we want to bring back the head coach, the associate coach, the assistant coach? We want to bring back all these guys. They're A-rated. I think we had a good season. I think they've earned another contract. So I don't think we're going to be looking for a new head coach unless there's someone really crazy out there. Uh, also ending off the season by looking at the awards, of course. Carolina Hurricanes winning another Stanley Cup. Three consecutive cups for the Eastern Conference. President's Trophy to the Arizona Coyotes. Clarence S. Campbell Bowl to the Sharks. Individual awards. Matthews wins the Art Ross. The Hart to Elias Pettersson. James Norris to Victor Hedman. Lady Bing to Mitch Marner. Calder to Levo, the guy over on the Golden Knights. Conn Smythe to Sebastian Aho. Vezina to Vitek Vanacek. Jennings also to Vanacek. Masterton to Middleton. Jack Adams to the coach of the Predators. Selkie going to Barkov. Ted Lindsay to Pedersen. And Morris Richard to Matthews for, what, the fifth consecutive year? In the AHL, any awards? Steven Lorenz, who we love. Yeah, anyone you trade away, they're going to do amazing wherever they go. Steven Lorenz goes and wins uh, AHL awards. And uh, Mishkov, still not in the NHL just yet. He wins the, the Calder Cup with the Ontario Reign. We should have a good matchup going forward. So, yeah, I forgot to mention in our Kings series, although Mishkov wasn't there, it was the team that passed on Connor Bedard and took uh, Mishkov first and allowed us to take Bedard at number two, who we eliminated in round number one. So that's another piece of the storyline that we could add right there. Progress reports after this season. What kind of growth are we seeing? Wow, so a lot of this unsustainable. But we know what some of it, especially what you can see in the green is for real. Eklund, yeah, 24 in the green there. He's an 87 overall, love it. Eric Carlson at an 85. Couture 85, Drew up to an 87, but probably unsustainable. Bedard now at an 88, Glass an 84, Wheeler down to an 83. We should get good value for him in whatever trade we do. Lucius up to an 82, Lindblom down to an 83, Vlasic 81, Zucker 83. We're going to be moving on from him, probably just trade his rights away. Samsonov, Bouchard, really like, what are we going to do with some of these guys? Gregor up to an 81. What are we going to do with some of these guys? We've got to consider that. Uh, and goaltending, yeah, nothing there. In the system now, what kind of growth do we have over the course of the season? Kiviharu is up to a 69. Bystets at a 76. Hornquist at a yeah, high elite goalies at a 58. 
Bickle, Kostitsin, Bopi. Rodin's at an 81 overall. He'll be making the NHL next season. Uh, what about Ozzy? Ozzy Weisblatt, anything from him? No growth, eh? Mercury's at an 81. No. And uh, Owen Pickering's still at an 80. And that's it. Nothing from Lindbergh, unfortunately. All right, so there's the growth over this past season. Looking at the contract extensions we may want to consider headed into the 2025 offseason, we will have how much to play with all expiring? Uh, we will have 6.38 to play with. So we could sign Lindell to a pretty fair contract, but we don't really have the roster spots. Because looking at our defense right now, consider this. Carlson, Bouchard, Knizhov, Knizhev, Vlasic, hold on, Pickering, Ferraro, Merkley, Rodin. It's a lot of players who want to find their way into the NHL. Rodin, by the way, 40 points in 52 games in the SHL. That's amazing to see. So, yeah, that's the problem. Rodin may just because, be because of the roster spots. Jason Zucker, he wants $4 million. Yeah, he's going to be gone. Reedy, I'd like to keep Sam Reedy. Yeah, I could see that. Noah Gregor, he's up to an 81. Yeah, I could see that. Ryan Merkley, do, if he's staying, whoa, he wants crazy money. We'll have to qualify him. And then after that, we can pretty much just take care of everybody else. And for the goalies, Montembeau is expiring. He wants 1.6. Eh. Lindbergh wants minimum, and McIniemi wants minimum. So that's good. But I don't know. Do we need a better backup goalie? I don't know what's up with the goaltending. What's up with the roster spots? Always consider the roster spots. Is Mantha staying? Is Lindell staying? Who's coming up into the roster? Is Wiseblack going to make the lineup? Is Bystack going to make the lineup? Are Pickering and Rodine both going to make the lineup? Potential free agents as of now, just looking at the potential UFAs, we could see Aho, Hedman, Marchand, Kopitar, Giroud, Tavares. A lot of big names could be dropping to free agency, but we don't really have the money unless we maybe consider trying to find a way to move on from Vlasic or Couture. That would open up a lot of money for us. And if we did want to move on from those players or anyone else, we can check out our trade values here by looking at our trade block. Uh, I'll take off Hurdle, probably. I'm not sure why all those guys are there. Let's just look at our trade value here. Of course, a ton for Bedard, Rodin a lot. And down the list we go, lots for Kibi Haru. Eric Carlson still a fair bit of value at his age. Cody Glass, love to see that in 84 overall. Uh, 2.225, that's only for one more season, right? No, two more years after this one, lovely. Bouchard, Tange, who's probably going to be making the team next season. Mantha has some value if we're moving on from him. Uh, a lot of players who have fair value. Very impressive. I was, I was expecting it to be a lot lower than this. Wheeler, good value for whatever we'll be moving on from him for. Uh, and then Vlasic with that value. We saw Couture back there. And of course, for our draft picks, closing it out with potential draft thoughts, we will be picking at number 31 in the first round. We have a couple picks. Actually, we have three picks in the second round. But unfortunately, it's New York, San Jose, and Carolina. So the last two picks of the second round, and then a late second as well. So second to last in the first close to the end in the second and the last two picks in the second as well so i wouldn't mind trying to package those up to do something because it's not a super strong draft class either franchise player first overall but then after that it's michael misa real life player then after it drops off the players who are one year away or more for nhl eta top sixes in the top like top six potential within the top five of the draft no one that really stands out. There's a three-bar medium elite, two-bar medium elite. If we're drafting around uh, 31, maybe this top 4D, maybe this top 6 forward. Then there's even this guy who was guaranteed low elite, Cedric Bobilev, Bobby Lev. All guys who are three, four years away, though. No one who's 1, 2, or even NHL ready. Further down the line, we see low top 6, uh, medium starter, low elite. What I really wanted to mention... Uh, I don't think there's anyone else to really talk about here. No, what I really want to mention, though, at three bar low elite, was the goaltending. Now, for goaltenders, I think we definitely want to take a goalie in this draft. Now, there is Gabriel Degla, who has medium starter potential, but he's two years away at the age of 18, which means he's probably already like a 70 some overall, low 70s, high 60s. There's also Grabeshkov, who's four years away at the age of 18, not bad. But what really confuses me is that you have this guy, Jesus Foy, and also Ed Bickle, guys who, this guy's 17, but he's two years away. 
That means he's already like a 73 overall at the age of 17, but he has only fringe starter potential. Same for this guy, who's 17 and four years away. So for both these guys, this guy by 19, this guy by 21, you're telling me they're ready for the NHL? Usually it's like guys who are 18, 19, and five years away. These are guys who are 17, 18, and two, three, four years away. So no one has really crazy potential, but they have great NHL ETA. So should we spend a pick on one of these goalies or even multiple goalies there? Let me know your thoughts on that. Aside from those goalies, no one really standing out like crazy to me in the draft. We'll just take the best players available. Try to make trades where we're able to. Maybe trade some value coupled up with some money to try and get the rights to a certain player who's going to be a UFA. All kinds of different directions we can go in headed into the 2025 draft and off season where we'll be heading into year number four wanting to capture the Stanley Cup. A brutal Stanley Cup final exit in five games against the Hurricanes. It was a great ride. I don't need to recap it. Rounds one, two, and three were all amazing, especially round number one. So I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to leave a like. It was a long one. And be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. NHL 23 franchise mode, career simulations, real life hockey content, as well as hockey card content. Brand new to the channel. If you haven't checked it out, already be sure to give that a look here in the end cards and please do join us on the discord server if you haven't already we'd love to see your thoughts down here on youtube or over on discord there's a lot to think about what were your favorite parts of the postseason who were your heroes who were your duds i'm looking forward to reading all your thoughts all your suggestions headed into the 2025 off season so thank you very much once again for taking the time to watch and i'm looking forward to seeing you again in the next one